Hello, I'm Gleb and today I'm going to tell you about 5G measurements and filtering at different layers. Let's get started. Please note, this information not a technical advice. Please use your own official guidelines, manuals and technical specifications from your vendor. Let's start with the main signal of 5G, 5G SSB block. We know that this is the only always on transmitted 5G in our signal. It is essential signal. It is consists of primary synchronization signal, secondary synchronization signal, PBCH, very important channel for downlink synchronization, which consists of master information block and demodulation reference signal, which may help user equipment to receive and demodulate that SSB block because we know in 5G there is no cell reference signals like it in 4G. So that's why every single every uh, signal is uh, use additional demodulation reference signal to demodulate. User equipment use SSB blocks for downlink synchronization or providing essential information for beam and cell level measurements. We know that SSB block can be transmitted with 20 milliseconds usually, but also other periodicity are possible. And from conceptual point of view, one SSB block is not equal to a single cell. One cell or one PCI may have from four to 64 different SSB blocks transmitted at the same time and it depends on frequency ranges, it depends on how exactly your advanced antenna system works and capable of different beam forming techniques. We will talk about it later. Let's try to understand how exactly user equipment can differentiate different SSB beams. In case of FR1 bands, user equipment can only receive demodulation reference signals. We know that that signals occupy three OFDM symbols. It means that we can code up to eight different SSB blocks using that information. For FR1, in that way, user equipment can understand up to eight different SSB blocks. In case of millimeter waves, in case, in case of FR2 bands, in addition to previous method, user equipment can receive and demodulate additional PBCH payload with three bits of information and it helps to use the equipment to receive and differentiate up to 64 SSB beams. Again, from conceptual point of view, let's try to understand what, what is SSB beams and what is SSB coverage. Here at that example, you can see G node B, 5G base station with advanced antenna system. And here we can see only one sector. That sector consists of 20 SSB blocks in my example. You can see how different in, in different areas, uh, different SSB blocks serving that areas. Here is in another example from a real network. This is for mid-band and we know that for that frequency range up to eight different SSB blocks possible. Here just one sector, one PCI, we can see how from drive tests, different SSB blocks covering and serving different physical areas. In that example, seven SSB blocks configured that cell in that antenna sector. And here is an example of millimeter waves. We know that up to 64 different SSB beams possible. That antenna system support 32 SSB blocks. We can see how that blocks allocated beam map in a big picture, we can see how uh, that different beams with different SSB indexes serve different areas in, in a real way uh, because of that data from a real drive test. SSB RSRP used for cell selection, reselection, power control, mobility, and other multiple measurements. What does it mean? It means that the average received power of one resource element 
of a secondary synchronization signal. In other words, SSB RSRP or SS RSRP, it is basically the same. Yes, sometimes you may uh, see in different sources different variations. Yes, SSB RSRP or SS RSRP, but basically it is the same because secondary synchronization signal, it is a part of SSB, it has the same transmission power. So in many cases, I think we can assume that uh, it is the same. Of course, uh, user equipment, when it measure SSR, SRP, it, it is measure only useful data in time domain. For FR1 connection, it's supposed that the system, there is no multiple and massive antenna arrays at user equipment part. There is no reason to try to measure every antenna element. User equipment try to measure just at one single antenna connection, a summarized signal at one signal connection. For FR2 bands, it's supposed that user equipment also may have massive antenna array. It tried to measure combined signals from all antenna elements, which belong to a single receiver path. We know that not only SSB beams and blocks possible, there are also channel state information reference signals, which can be used for multiple reasons, mainly for dedicated channels. This is for connected mode mobility, power control and beam measurements. That's why CSI RS RSRP measured as an average of received power of a single resource element. You can find mapping between different indexes and real values. The same mapping actually you can find in technical specifications. Channel state information reference signals, they can be configured with different power and usually actually uh, power, uh, there is a power differences in downlink. That's why base station is responsible for providing power offset in order to user equipment to understand the difference between, between real transmitted power between SSB blocks and CSI RS beams in order to perform measurements in the right way. And again, from conceptual point of view, we should not tell that CSI RS beams is opposite to SSB beams, vice versa. No, SSB beams also have some limitations because uh, they transmitted not all time, allocated only at certain bandwidth, it is hard to use them for tracking beams, tracking different radio conditions. So that's why CSI RS channels and CSI RS beams can be used as a complement to SSB beams. So they work together. And let's briefly talk about 5G RSSI, RSRQ and CINAR. We know that there are two types of RSRQ for SSB beams and for CSI RS beams. RSRQ for SS beam used for cell selection, reselection, handovers, and CSI RS estimated for beam level mobility. Basically, it is the, the ratio of uh, RSRP and RSSI per number of resource blocks. 5G RSSI, this is a total power for all connections or the whole bandwidth part. Of course, additional measurements can be done from user equipment side to support connected mode mobility. This is um, signal to noise ratio. This is measured on either PBCH demodulation reference signals or channel state information reference signal measures on each resource element. Actually, there is a big difference between RSSI, RSRQ in 4G and in 5G. Again, because in 4G we use cell reference signals, which transmitted for the whole bandwidth and for the whole time. If we look at that example, from left side we can see 4G a grid and from the right side there is a 5G grid and we can see that RSSI or RSRP in 4G measured only measurements only based on uh, cell reference signals whereas in 5G RSRP in in case of SSB blocks for example they measure demodulation reference signals other cases RSSI measure other areas other resource elements of uh, 5G grid so that's why in LT RSRQ, always negative values, RSSI is higher than RSRP. But in 5G, RSRQ can be positive or negative. RSSI can be better or lower than 
RSRP values. So it is can be uh, quite confusing for the first time, especially if you do some measurements, if you do some drive tests in your 5G network and try to compare 4G and 5G metrics, you should be aware about that. Now let's try to understand how user equipment can get cell level measurements results uh, from beam level measurements. Here is two examples uh, of uh, two beam arrays and there is a special threshold which provided from base station to user equipment and uh, by that threshold a user equipment can understand when to use consolidation when to use average of multiple beams and consider it as a cell level or when to use measurements just from one the strongest beam so in the first case cell level measurements will be the average of two beams yes because uh, in that example two beams is higher than the special threshold and if all beams or just one beam higher than a threshold we can say that cell level will be the same as strongest beam when it comes to ssb beams their parameter is broadcasted in sip2 and in sip4 blocks and when it comes to CSI RS beams, they parameters measurement reporting for handover purposes. And as you see, such handover boundaries for source cell and for target cell should be the same. It means that we should define the same threshold for our network if they have a similar antenna system, hardware at each base station, in order to involve in measurements the same number of beams. So in this case, we will have similar handover boundaries because, for example, if a source cell try to measure multiple beam and consolidate that average results, target cell measure only the strongest beam, we will have different handover boundaries. This may lead to unnecessary handovers and not so very planned and optimized network. In case of single beam mobility, it may increase number of handovers, especially for millimeter waves, because there are so many fading effects and rapid fluctuations in a radio environment. Again, that's why it is very important to define that threshold in a very good way to understand your network and define that threshold. And uh, usually if your system is capable of beam forming and massive antenna arrays, it is better to define that threshold with multiple beams in order to use our equipment use multiple beams for estimation. And when it comes to SSB based level mobility obviously based on ssb associated with initial downlink bandwidth part and with bandwidth parts which is associated with that initial downlink bandwidth part a cell reference beams level mobility they can only be performed for other downlink bandwidth parts so csi res beam level mobility is not used for initial downlink parts downlink bandwidth parts and other associated with that downlink bandwidth parts also important to understand now let's look at filtering we know that measurements and filtering can happen at different layers there is two layers actually layer one is physical layer and layer two is rc layer we can measure and filter our values at that different layers Layer 1, used when user equipment provide different metrics, for example, SSRSRP, when sending channel state information report to base station. And layer 3 is used when uh, user equipment provide RSC measurement reports for cell level purposes, handovers for intercell immobility. In case of uh, layer 3, in case of RRC measurements, uh, base station provide an information to UE how fast user equipment should measure SSB blocks. It is SMTC, this is SSB measurement time configuration, and uh, it may consist of different subframes. So it means that user equipment should be capable to measure different SSB blocks, different subframes and also that can be configurable from base station side. Main differences between physical layer and 
RC layer filtering, physical layer filtering not so strong specified by 3GPP. This is mainly up to vendor implementation because it involves uh, many beamforming and massive MIMA techniques. It should be very fast in order to react with minimum delay and help remove impact or, or on uh, rapid changes in radio environment, uh, support fast switches between beams when user equipment in active mode. But this is uh, rather beam level measurements. It happens at physical layer. Layer 3 filtering, it is more directly specified in 3GPP, should cope with fadings, but it should be able to consider pretty long time in order to understand and be sure in case of handovers, yes, and in order to avoid unnecessary handovers, as we may call it ping-pong handovers. So measurements at L3 layer, at RSC layer, are used for handovers for intercell beam mobility. And now let's look at that uh, picture, that picture from uh, 3GPP specification. Here we can see from the left side how multiple beams received from base station and at the layer number one user equipment responsible for filtering that results. Then at, at the higher layer, at RSC layer, user equipment try to consolidate to choose to select a beam or try to average different measurements from different beams, then try to evaluate cell quality based on that uh, beam consolidation and selection. Uh, try to filter it in a very specific way with uh, certain requirements which you can find in 3GPP. And then evaluate the criteria for certain events for A1, A2, A4, B1 events. We will talk about it in my next videos. This is basically the basic representation L1, L3 filtering. Of course, there is a mapping between L1 and 3 layer, which also you can find in 3GPP specifications. Multiple reporting range for different layers. L3 layer, uh, reporting range from minus 156 dBm to minus 31 dBm with 1 dB res resolution. What's interesting here is that upper, upper limit, it is higher than it was in LTE. I think this is because of beamform. 5G has more advanced beamforming techniques, so that's why upper limit for uh, reporting is higher than it was in LTE. Whereas lower limit is also extremely low, I would say, like from GPS satellites, it is uh, minus uh, 156 dBm. It is the same like in the last 4G standard, which also was specifically adjusted for low power but wide area IoT cases. So very interesting. And that's actually all for today from my side. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave in my channel. And if you like this video, you can like and subscribe. Goodbye.